Welcome back to Pop Tabs, keeping tabs on all your pop culture topics. I'm your host, Matthew Epp, and joining me today is... Maisie Brammer. And... Emily Worrell. And guys, guess what's ruined? What? It's Twin! No! <laughs> <laughs> so, Shroud, aka Michael Gearzek, is the latest Twitch streamer to abandon the platform in favor of the new Microsoft-owned streaming service, Mixer. Now, if you've been keeping up, this is uh, pretty par for the course now. Uh, we saw Ninja leave. There's been a few other people to jump ship. Uh, Mixer is, uh, like we said, owned by Microsoft, and it's the second major... Uh, mm -mm. Edit this out. <laughs> So yeah, the news came as a shock to a lot of Shroud's fans uh, because he is one of the longest running uh, streamers on the platform. And so a lot of people were really taken aback by it. What are your guys' initial thoughts on this? Um, when I first heard it, I was actually, I was watching Twitch because I, I watch Twitch a lot. And nice. I was like bored. And I was watching, watching one of my favorite streamers and he was like, Shroud moved to Big Star. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I was actually really surprised, but I thought about it and I was like, I watch Shroud like pretty regularly and I'm like, I'm happy for him because like, um, he's been streaming on Twitch for a while and it's just like, I don't know, I feel like he's grown his personal brand enough to like be able to take it somewhere else and like that's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and he's like obviously getting a lot of money. So like, yeah, yeah it's just really great for that. Um, and I just feel like it's not that big of a change like in the long run. Cause like, I mean, what, you click on something, you're on a website. <laughs> you, know you, you just mean? click. In the bottom of being, you you know click I mean? and you watch. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I think it's a good thing and I think it's cool that like not everyone is like locked to Twitch and like feels yeah. like they have to stay there. Because that's, I mean, that's not good. No. <laughs> I just don't see, like, why it matters that much. But I also, like, don't really watch Twitch or anything. But also, it's just, like, it's, it's still the same content. It's still yeah. the same person. It's just, right. like, a different platform. All you have to do is, like, download a, a different app or go to a different website. Right. Like, mm -hmm. it's not like it's going to drastically right. affect anything or anyone. So, like, mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I thought too, and then, um, but like the Twitch community is pretty like close knit in a way. Mm -hmm. So like, um, like a lot of people that stream on Twitch, like they have like, you know, I'm sure Stroud over had over like thirty thousand subs. So like that's like a really big mm -hmm. community, and to just like kind of uproot them and like move that yeah. is like kind of a big thing, especially since there was like no announcement beforehand, and like people pay monthly, and they like some people pay like twenty five bucks a month for like tier three subscriptions, yeah. which is crazy. Um, but yeah, but Mixer is like pretty similar, so it's not that big of a change, but it is pretty significant if you like watch it a lot. Yeah, I was yeah. kind of in two different camps because like. On the one hand, I actually think it's a good move. I think the problem with a lot of like content creators is at the end of the day, they're like a product, right? Mm -hmm. And if your product can only be sold on in one store, it's gonna be like a kind of a rough product. And so I think being able to diversify and be able to show that you can take your product and move it to a lot of different places, uh, I think that's good. But at the same time, yeah, I was kind of, I guess saddened from a community aspect. Because yeah. like, that's the thing, it is, it is a community and this idea that like, oh, these fans and all these people that we've built up together on this platform, we've done it all together for so long, guys. Yeah. Mm. To just be like, ah, Mixer though. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like the same thing that like, I, I don't think it really applies anymore, but a lot of people really hearken for that old like YouTube age where YouTube mm -hmm. felt like this like wild west of anyone can be successful. <laughs> I love that. I did I too. Uh, it was such a good time. Time good days. Dan and Phil. The times. Yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, you just find all that community and now uh, because so many people started going mainstream or selling out to like a broadcast stations, mm -hmm. people start getting TV shows, you kind of lost that. I feel like it's almost a similar situation where it makes it feel a little more industry, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I feel that. And like the the uh, trailers for both Ninja and Shroud, they're both very like, it's like so dramatic. Yeah. Like, did you watch them? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a game. Like, yeah, <laughs> they take it yeah. so seriously. Yeah, yeah, which I guess it is serious for them, but it's funny for me to watch. Right. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's, it's also another thing of like, um, like Fortnite and like whether like, if you think it's trash or not, like it made like Ninja and like, uh, Shroud uh, pretty popular and like so did Twitch and like Matt was saying it like helped build their community and community and their like personal brand so um, I mean I guess it, we always knew that like another streaming site would emerge but it's just like it is kind of shocking I guess. yeah mm -hmm. do you guys think this will be actually better for Twitch to see like big people start to jump do you think that Twitch will try to kind of elevate the platform Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's really good for like small streamers and like so like when Ninja and Shroud started out like obviously like I, they both came from like pro esports gaming yeah. but like they had no like content creation background um, and like Twitch really gave them like a platform to develop that um, but like now like they have these like huge audiences so like no one's watching any smaller streamers and there are like 
tens of thousands of people that stream Fortnite every day to zero right. viewers. <laughs> and it's like, I like they're out there grinding and hustling and they're getting nothing. But it's like, if people, if there are like more platforms and more like um, attention around it, like hopefully people that are small content creators can like get some traction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I, I think that would be really beneficial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, it's like, aren't the people who are already watching like Ninja and Shroud just gonna go to the other platform? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's maybe. my concern. But also maybe people will be like, well, wait, but I like Twitch and then they'll watch other people and yay, right. mm -hmm. we're back to the wild west of YouTube, but right. Twitch. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I think it will be a good thing, hopefully, for the platforms, because like, like you said, on the one hand, it opens up the door to like, maybe you need to find new people if you're really dead set on Switch. But more than mm -hmm. anything, I think like, competition helps businesses thrive, you know? Mm -hmm. Xbox and PS4, like, <laughs> the only mm -hmm. reason they kind of keep pushing themselves is because they're always trying to keep up with the other one. It, like mm -hmm. you can watch when they announce a new like generation of console, they're like, ah, well we have this much data now. And they're like, well our controller yeah. vibrates <laughs> fancy. Yeah. Like, do a, you have a Doritos ad for your, <laughs> like? But no, yeah, like uh, PS, uh, the PS5 that they're announcing is gonna have like, the intuitive vibration thing, and I'm sure Xbox is gonna pick up on that. It, like, mm -hmm. the competition caused each other to do that. So I hope that happens on Mixer and Twitch. Yeah. Hopefully, mm -hmm. what also might just happen is everyone just goes to Mixer and Twitch dies. Yeah. Something about Minger, Mixer, Mixer, Mixer is so <laughs> like, I don't know, it's like, ugh. It like, feels very corporate. Yeah. The fact that it's a Microsoft company, I yeah. feel like that, mm -hmm. which like, to be fair, Amazon owns Twitch, but like, right. at the same time, it's just like Microsoft, Mixer, and I'm like, Ew, no, stop yeah. it. Calm down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that's the thing. Like, Amazon, yes, they absolutely own uh, Twitch, but, like, at the same time, like, I don't know, I feel like you kind of heard about Twitch rising in popularity right. from, like, a really long time of like, oh, small creators building up and uh, building yeah. followings and gaming mm -hmm. got more popular mm -hmm. with this. Where Mixer, it's almost like they came in and they bought their community. Yeah. Which, yeah. like, feels icky. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that being said, uh, as we've discussed, uh, Fortnite is something that super, super grew on uh, Twitch. And along with uh, kind of the popularity of Fortnite wavering with the popularity of Twitch, we're seeing them try to kind of revitalize themselves, mm -hmm. uh, both for a Twitch platform and just in general with the season two. Yes. Uh, they had a weird blackout thing. Black hole. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It yeah. shut down for a minute and then it, it swung crazy. back. What are you guys' initial thoughts on that? I was, again, I was watching it live because I was like, this is going to be so cool. Like, <laughs> we're going to get to see the new season. And um, yeah, like Twitch was in darkness for like three days. Like everyone was just like watching like cat compilations, like with their like like hundreds and thousands of viewers. Right. Like, what do we do? What do we do? Um, that was my favorite part of it is watching Twitch streamers stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People were just like streaming the black hole. They were like, I'm asleep. Like, yeah. in the like, context. Um, yeah, I think it was really cool and like creative and innovative because like since Fortnite came out, there wasn't like a day where it wasn't being streamed on Twitch. Right. And then mm. for like three days, it was just total yeah. literal darkness. Um, and I, I think it was really creative and it like, it uh, it was a resurgence like for the game because mm. like uh, people that left um, and haven't been playing for a while, like they heard about it and they started playing yeah. again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll be real, I played Fortnite for three days um, I was very bad at it. I remember that. Yeah, I got into like the top 17 once and just bragging. Wow. I know. Wow. I know. He's uh, a gamer. He really is. <laughs> but, uh, but, and so I, I tried that, didn't do really good. And then I re-downloaded it again with season two. You I was, did? Yeah, because I was like, ooh, I can carry people now. Oh, you can't yeet? Yeet. yeet <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so I do think it caused a bit of resurgence. Uh, what mm -hmm. do you think about it? Um, okay, uh, so I decided that I was never going to play Fortnite and I can pinpoint the exact moment that happened. I was um, in my physics class and um, my movie class. <laughs> this, this kid was on his phone and he was always really cringy and then my teacher was like, hey, get off your phone and he was like, hey, I'm playing Fortnite and I was like, oh, no. never, never oh, in yeah, my you life. Don't be that I, I, I just, I couldn't do it. So I've never played the Fortnite. <laughs> But I, love that. I did. I did watch the video of the whole black hole thing happening, mm -hmm. and I, I thought it was kind of funny. I, yeah. I need to stop finding things funny, but like I was just like, because the lady who was streaming it was like, "Oh, the music is so beautiful," and when it was really just like, "Dun dun dun." dun. <laughs> yeah. She's been watching it for thirty-six hours straight, and she's like losing her mind. Yeah. She's like. 
This is the, tr the trance that I'm in right now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, is she okay? I hope so. Can someone check on her? <laughs> <laughs> so season two did bring a lot of new features. Like we said, you can carry people. There's now like a water aspect. There's a where you can like kind of raft and stuff. There's a lot of big you can changes. Fish. You can fish. Ooh. So do you guys think these changes will be good for Fortnite? Will it just kind of continue with progress? Or since it was already kind of starting to waver in popularity, are people over it? What are your thoughts? Um, I think that it will, it'll stay steady for a while and they might try to, I don't think we're going to get a new map for um, a long time and that's really what everyone was waiting for. That's why the game was kind of dying because people were just so bored with it. Um, but I think in the next few years another um, Battle Royale will, will emerge or another like first person shooter that just like overtakes it. Like mm -hmm. at least that's what I hope happens because I don't want it to just, yeah. you know, stay on top forever. That'd be boring. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think the people who are loyal and have been loyal to Fortnite are gonna stay loyal and hopefully they'll also pick up like some new people or some people coming back when they add the new features and everything. But like, it's it's one of those things where I'm like, okay, this, this has to end sometime. Right. Like this has to just kind of <laughs> taper out at some point. Right. <laughs> no, I, I look at it kind of like Minecraft. Uh, Minecraft was like unstoppable forever and then eventually it was usurped. Uh, it, it, it took a few years, but it eventually falls. Nothing can stay this prevalent forever. And I do think the season two, the fact that it's like making such harsh changes, mm -hmm. you can tell that like even the creators understand people want something different. I don't mm -hmm. think it's different enough yeah, to same. where people are gonna like jump back on the train mm -hmm. and save it. I think it'll probably just stay where it's at, steady decline until we get some new amazing game. Yeah. Um, speaking of amazing things, we have a new book game. So, Trixie Mattel, Kasia Zamalachkova. It's the right. <laughs> I love that attempt. Thank you. <laughs> That's so good. They wrote a uh, book together, it's a joint book, called Trixie and Kasia's Guide to Womanhood. If you don't know, they are two extremely successful, very popular drag queens. Women. Women. <laughs> Real biological women, continue. Real biological women <laughs> who are actually biological men dressing as women. Um, exactly. You know. Um, and so they have risen to prominence on uh, the show RuPaul's Drag Race, and then they've had a very successful internet career, and now they are, uh, they've gone on tour. Trixie had uh, two uh, number one albums, and now they are breaking into the book industry. Because why Take not? Piece of that thick book. <laughs> Gotta get that book. Uh, so what are you guys' initial thoughts on this? Um, I didn't know it was a thing until yesterday when they like announced the cover and I freaked out, fully freaked out. Um, I love them so much, like they mean everything to me, they're so good. Um, and I'm really excited to uh, pre-order the book, get the book and read it because um, they're both like my like comedy icons and I feel like I've never got to like experience them in like a book format so like right. I'm excited to sit down and read it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's cool, you know, like they're expanding what they're doing, they're taking on a different kind of format for mm -hmm. their content and I think like if you can do that and you have the desire to do that like why not do it good on you mm -hmm. you know yeah <laughs> no I think it is just the kind of same case I said earlier is like uh, having a diverse product is one of the most important things because mm -hmm. sooner or later people get sick of whatever your product is rather it be Fortnite or rather it be like a YouTube <laughs> show but uh, people get sick of that, so you have to kind of constantly be moving to keep mm -hmm. people engaged. Yeah. A, a businesswoman. A businesswoman is a businesswoman. That being said, something that some people are worried about is um, the, what they have been doing. So they have a YouTube show called um, It's their show. <laughs> Uh, and not yours, <laughs> and so uh, they uh, have announced that they're filming for next season that, but no one's really gotten anything since, and so some people are worried that, you know, what they are kind of famous for uh, is now being ignored. So what do you guys think about celebrities kind of, we'll say, uh, reprioritizing uh, what they do and kind of letting the things that they're best known for and most liked for fall to the wayside? Mm -hmm. I think it's a definite, like, real concern, but I think of, like, what we know of drag queens is, like, they work their ass off, like, they hustle. Yeah. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. clearly, like, they're out there, like, literally hustling for, like, dollars and gloves. <laughs> so I I feel like with these two, and, like, they're so, like, in tune with their audience, um, with these two, these two specifically, like, I don't think they're going to lose sight. And I think this book is just another way to, like, grow their, like, mm -hmm. empire. Um, but I think with other people in the past, like, people that use YouTube as a way to come up or... Um, you know, uh, yeah, people that just like use YouTube to get successful. They they'll write a book and then they'll kind of you know just try to 
uh, they, they try to go to TV or like movies or something. But yeah. I really feel like Trixie and Cassie are like true to their uh, YouTube audience. Yeah, mm -hmm. and also like people's priorities change, you know, yeah. in life, and these like. Even though there's that whole culture of like, oh, they're they're celebrities, so it's like they almost become like a product in a way, you right. know. Yeah. It's also like, if their priorities are somewhere else now, like, uh, if I'm a real fan, I'm gonna want them to live yeah. their best exactly. lives and do what's best for them at this point in their career and their life, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm in sort of two camps because on the one hand, I think it's almost like. There is, uh, at a point, there comes this almost like, we'll say, uh, transactional responsibility where like, mm -hmm. I've helped your career and done all these things and so, uh, you know, you offer this product and I expect it and I, I think that, you know, it is important to respect your fans and respect that what they want to see mm -hmm. and not just completely be like, oh, well, it's my art so I'll do what I want. But at the same time, I think one of the most stifling things for like artists can be like, uh, just staying stagnant mm -hmm. and not being able to try new things I think just really kind of hurts someone's art so I think if they do not I think it can be uh, you'll just get a worse product overall so I think it's probably a good idea to diversify mm -hmm. now on the subject of the book uh, as I said is Trixie and Koch's guide to womanhood as we've said they are not women per se they're that's drag what queens you said, but that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is also what they say. But uh, yeah, and so since they are uh, men uh, dressing as women, they're doing drag, do you think it is problematic to make a book called The Guide to Womanhood? Is that kind of mansplaining womanhood in its own right? Um, I don't think so. I think that uh, Trixie in particular has like, she always jokes that like her fans are like literally like all women and like in particular like all lesbians. Yeah, it's which interesting. Are, which they are, which is so weird. Like I never thought about it and I was like, huh, it really is like all of us out here. Um, <laughs> but so I think like it's really smart for them to like play to their audience and like lesbians read books. <laughs> like you know what it's I mean? true. Wait, lesbians lesbians I, read lesbians books. Lesbians read books. Yeah. <laughs> You, you read books, you do. I read books. I don't know, I just feel like, what I meant by that is that I feel like, I feel like women uh, will like go out and buy it because they're like super loyal and like they want to hear what they have to say and like mm -hmm. they know a thing or two about makeup and like, yeah. you know, what to wear or what bra, you know, they right. know stuff. I don't know exactly what it's going to be about, but <laughs> I think it's smart. I think it's a, it's a good business move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't, from what I've experienced of drag, like it's all about self-expression you know and if they want to express what they feel is like their guide to womanhood what they view as womanhood then like express that live your best life you know like yeah. I just I, I think it's I think it's kind of cool honestly I I sort of feel like it's a bit I'll, I'll go ahead and say it's a I, bit mansplaining. I, I feel what you're saying. It's, I a, know, it's a little yeah. bit like mansplaining because to for you to just kind of flat out, at least from the title, just be like, "We have experienced nothing you have." Now listen to our expertise on it. Yeah, it does feel yeah. a bit disrespectful. I'll mm -hmm. say. I feel that. Um, especially like you know uh, they were talking about it and they uh, Kasha wrote haikus about getting your period, and <laughs> so like things that like sure they can do comedy and make jokes about, but like it's almost not in their wheelhouse. Do you know? What I mean. Yeah, I do I know what you that. mean. When I when I wrote that when I wrote that when I read that I was like, this is so Katya because like everything she does is like over the top and like performance art and like dramatic and yeah. like if she's gonna like dive into what it means to be a woman, she's gonna like do it justice. Yeah. And like I do think it's like a bit manslaney, but like I trust her. Okay. I, yeah. Um, and also like I feel like they might just like dive into like drag culture. Like I'm not entirely sure. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I definitely feel like if it's less mansplainy than if like a crusty old white Republican senator <laughs> yeah. was just like, this is what being a woman is about, you know? They yeah. do that. So like, so they really, yeah. really do. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't love that. So like, I don't know. I definitely see where you're coming from with mm -hmm. that. But I also feel like I trust their expression of womanhood more than I would trust most other men's, you know? Yeah. There is that. something to be said about the fact that uh, they are drag queens. They have spent their entire, like, careers making themselves into women. And right. in a sense, you know, drag is an, uh, it, it's an exploration of gender. And in a sense, if you're a man dressing a woman, it's kind of an exploration of womanhood in its own right. Yeah. And so I, I can appreciate the artistic integrity of, like, being like, 
we've done nothing but dive into research about women by becoming them in a sense. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I think that there is merit there for sure. Yeah. It's almost like, you know, I can't say I can uh, speak entirely for like uh, race issues, but you know, on the show we've talked about race issues a lot. Right. And so I think as long as, you know, there's research and respect going into anything, I think it can work out. Mm -hmm. You know what's probably not gonna work out though? What? Oh boy. <laughs> Good old Zucky boy. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> Uh, Facebook CEO, if you don't know, and one of the richest people in the country. And a lizard. <laughs> and a lizard. <laughs> Someone's Not for it. sure, but it is a th theory that I kind of support. Uh, <laughs> he recently addressed the House of Financial Services Committee uh, on a variety of issues that lawmakers are taking up with his site. Uh, one of the most notable was uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez really grilled into him over something that's taken a lot of precedent in the news lately, that Facebook is currently allowing political ads for 2020 that have lies in them. Um, mm -hmm. You can basically, you don't need to have any research, anything backed, you can just say whatever you want in a Facebook ad, and it mm -hmm. can say, you know, uh, Bernie Mark Zuckerberg is a, is a lizard. Yes, you know, anything. Bernie Sanders uh, is uh, uh, is officially advocating that no one is allowed to use cups anymore. You are allowed <laughs> to put that up as a like official Facebook ad, and Facebook does not mind. Um, in the uh, Q and A with uh, AOC, he. Uh, was asked, you know, if are we allowed to, you know, promote for voter suppression? Am I allowed to target black communities and put the wrong date, you know? And he said, no, nothing that promotes violence or promotes voter suppression will be allowed, but pretty much anything else is free game. Yeah. So what are your initial thoughts on that? Here's my thing. Um, so Mark Zuckerberg is a lizard person. <laughs> Correct. I feel like he really- We here at Pop Tabs understand you are not a lizard person, I promise. <laughs> Anyway, um, speak for yourself. <laughs> um, I just I feel like this always comes up like during election seasons, and it's clearly like Russia like trying to like meddle with our like democracy, and people just trying to spread misinformation. And instead of doing the right thing, Mark, he always just, <laughs> he always decides with like the he just takes like the devil's advocate position of like. And he doesn't stand up and like... He's very like, oh, well, that's not our business. He's like, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I have to eat a bug. It's literally your business. But like. <laughs> yeah, no, it literally is his business, yeah. Um, so I just think it's kind of a cop-out, and I think he should like really think about what he's advocating for, because it's not democracy. Um, and I'm really glad that AOC... I'm not even going to try to say her name. I'm really glad that she like grilled into him, because like someone had to, yeah. you know? And like she's famous for that. Um, but yeah, I'm glad someone's like asking the questions at least so people are aware that this is a problem because I wasn't even aware. Right. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing is like in doing that and saying like it's not my fault, it's not my business, like you are allowing misinformation to be spread to right. voters and that's misinformation that can literally shape what happens in our country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel good about that. No. I don't know about y'all, but yeah. like <laughs> I... <laughs> I don't feel good about that, and I think, you know, at some point you can't just keep saying like, well, it's it's not my fault, it's this, because right. Facebook has been problematic. Like, yeah. it's Facebook stays problematic. Stays, stays problematic. problematic. It's been I problematic. I don't have it's one, but I still buy it. is. <laughs> it's still problematic, and it's going to keep being problematic from the way that it looks yeah. if they don't start taking some responsibility for what they do, some sort of yeah. accountability. And I think this is just another example of that, and a particularly dangerous example of that. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Oh no. Um, <laughs> but I, I know. But listen. <laughs> so there is, in my opinion, a separation between like a business's responsibilities and the government's responsibilities. Okay. Uh, you know, broadcast stations are regulated by, you know, like FCC and a lot of like government like kind of control where companies like Facebook aren't as much. There's there's less regulation there. And so while yes, it's true that a broadcast station is not allowed to broadcast lies, if Facebook is just a business and so Genuinely, do I think what they're doing is right or do I think it's fair? No, but I think it's very, very profitable. And that's mm -hmm. kind of what they have to do. It's a 
business for profit. And so I get it. I think I, I don't think it's like good that we're allowed to lie on <laughs> Facebook, but I think it should be allowed. Right. Um, I think there. I, I see what you're saying, but I, I also do think that the we have the FCC because we've trusted TV as a source of news for years, and like while like that is a legitimate source of news, and a lot of people get their news from there, like I and most people that I know get their news from Facebook, um, well, or Twitter, prominently Twitter, but- The internet. Uh, <laughs> the internet, yeah. So um, like we, we need kind of like an FCC, like for the internet, um, just to like regulate things like that, especially as it relates to like um, campaign things. Cause like um, you would never let someone broadcast that like you know on like CNN or something so right. why are we and but people get their news from Facebook legitimately yeah yeah so it's just it's a it's a conundrum it's a whole conundrum yeah this is one of those tricky things where it's all like first amendment you know yeah, because yeah. like of course the first amendment exists but there are also like those limits that have to be placed on it right. you know and like just libel. you have free speech doesn't mean, free speech only applies to the government. Facebook has every right to say you, what you can and can't say. So they and absolutely could, even mm -hmm. under the First Amendment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it is Ooh. difficult. I, <laughs> Icky. So I, I feel guilty for saying that like, yeah, no, it's fine, lie if you want to. But I do think that there is uh, something there. Uh, Zuckerberg also argued that while I certainly worry about the erosion of truth, I don't think most people want to live in a world where you can only post things that tech companies judge to be 100% true. Banning political ads favors incumbents and whoever the media chooses to answer. Why I think those sentences are really disjointed. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Zuckerberg. <laughs> um, I do, uh, I am curious to hear what you guys think about the fact that uh, he claims that this will help smaller candidates grow because mm -hmm. you know people don't have to just let the uh, incumbents come in and have whatever they say be true. Do you agree with that? I I agree with like the message behind what he's saying. Like that would be a cool thing if that were the case. But I don't think that's what this is doing. I think it's promoting mm -hmm. lies that would cause people to vote one way or another and not necessarily vote for a third party candidate or mm -hmm. a lesser known. Uh, main party candidate, um, but I don't. I think that also, like this, all probably comes down to an algorithm, right? Yeah. As most things on Facebook do. It basically, and targeted ad. The way these ads work is they're targeted at a certain community. You pick who you want. So if you want mm -hmm. to uh, go for like a female vote, then yeah, you can get pretty much your ads to pop up on most females. Please. Yeah. Um, oh, but more specifically, like the way that um, they're censoring the ads. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably runs through an algorithm, algorithms, and I, I doubt that it's advanced enough to know, like, well, this is a lie, but this lie is detrimental. So yeah. it just feels a bit like yeah. wishy-washy, and I really think they should just examine it a little closer and redefine their yeah. values a bit. Yeah. Yeah. There's no real line about what is okay and what's. Not okay. That's a yeah. fine That's, lie, but that lie would cause problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, like at the end of the day, if you're lying, you're lying. And I don't think that that benefits smaller candidates in yeah. any way, necessarily. I don't see how that works. Yeah, I, so basically my logic is, I do think it could really help small candidates. I do mm -hmm. think it could help them grow, but I don't like the way it would help them grow. Because essentially right. what he's saying is like, Say we have Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders up for election and Yang wants to win and the way he does that is he sends out a bunch of Facebook ads that say that Warren and yeah. Bi or Warren Biden and Bernie are, are all werewolves. Yeah. Like I don't think that's how I want Mark Zuckerberg the lizard. Size size. <laughs> size of them. Yeah, I don't think that's like the proper way to get an election is if yeah. because he even says himself, like, yeah, I worry about the erosion of truth, but like this will help small candidates. I don't think like the way we want to help small candidates is just kind of let truth fall to the wayside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do you think, so you've already mentioned it briefly, do you think that there needs to be stricter government regulation on social media sites like uh, Facebook and Twitter? For sure, because uh, we know there are like Russian bots, especially they're on Facebook and they're really on Twitter. And 
Um, like that kind of stuff just like needs to be regulated and I think that the people that are against regulation are those that don't have a problem with the fact that they're interfering in our elections like yeah. mm-hmm. on social media and it's a very real thing that happens and mm-hmm. I don't like like and like you said I don't think that anybody should be allowed to spread misinformation without like a, like a cost mm-hmm. yeah yeah I don't know it's one of those things where it's like time times are changing so I don't know if I would feel the same way about this, you know, if I was asked like five years ago even, you know? But I feel like it has come to a point where social media is what people use as like a legitimate news source sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like it's irresponsible to let lies be spread on those uh, channels, you know? Yeah, what it comes down to is, so if you look at your Twitter feed, you can see how many uh, impressions you get, which basically means how many uh, times your tweet has popped up on somebody's timeline. Uh, One of my tweets has popped up on uh, people's timeline over 170,000 times. And so basically, right, but basically (laughs) that uh, means that more than a lot of newspapers in our country, my tweet has shown up on people's feed. Mm -hmm. And so I think that there is a certain responsibility to that. I mean, under most uh, government guidelines that like, uh, if that was a newspaper, that would be like really detrimental to a case and that could Mm -hmm. like be huge Mm -hmm. lawsuits, but because it's social media, it's fine. And so I think there has to, because how many people have seen this, the volume it's spreading, how quickly it spreads and how unfact checked it is, I think there has to be some sort of government. Well, there already is some sort, but there has to be Mm -hmm. a stricter government regulation. Right, and and we already have like guidelines on nearly like every like social media site, like not to go back to Twitch, but I was just thinking about how like (laughs) Deller just got like kicked off Twitch and he like now streams on YouTube, but like, and it was for like a, a crazy thing, but like the fact that like they have rules to where like that can happen, but like people can totally like candidates can totally legitimize lies yeah. is kind of crazy. So I feel like yeah, we we need something, we need some oversight for that yeah. for sure. I would definitely agree. <laughs> cool. Cool. Well, what are you guys clothing about on this or anything else we talked about today? I am so excited about Tristan Katya's book. <coughs> I'm literally like. I, I'm so excited. Yes. I'm ready. I'm ready. And uh, Mark Zuckerberg is a lizard. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Facebook, stop. 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 Seriously, Just stop chill. It. Just what? Stop you don't have to do this. What are you trying to prove, you know? <laughs> uh, so Mixer, I'm never going to use Mixer. Facebook, I'm never going to make a Facebook. <laughs> but I'll probably read Trixie and Katya's book. Oh. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I have been your host, Matthew Yap. Joining me today was... Maisie Brammer. And... Emily Worrell. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Also, I'd like to be clear. I don't like the Facebook app. I lie. <laughs> I hate Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> and the fact that they can just lie on the top of this t- or on the top of this. We never lie on the top of this. We never lie on the top of this. The fact that they can lie on uh, Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I'm so bad. I'm so mad about it.